Thank you all for coming. Again, once more, uh, if you want to introduce yourself in the chat, that would be very helpful to us. And let me uh, just remind us of where we are today. So thank you very much. You are at the Health Council Talks for today. Oops, June 2nd. That is wrong. Today is June 16th, uh, 2023. But you are going to be hearing about the New Mexico Social Determinants of Health Collaborative. Um, so I'm Wendy Winnemute. I'm part one member of the planning team. And I know we have several other members of the planning team who are here today. So we're going to tell you about this new, uh, we think very exciting and very important and moving very quickly, statewide collaborative to help address, to help New Mexico create the infrastructure that will help address social determinants of health in New Mexico and make sure that all New Mexicans are connected to the resources they need to thrive. So stay with us. Uh, however, the first thing we're gonna do as always is to, um, if you will ask you, to, we'll ask you to join with us on our land acknowledgement. The New Mexico Alliance of Health Councils humbly recognizes and acknowledges that we are on the unceded territory and ancestral lands of the original peoples of New Mexico's Pueblos, the Apache Nations, and the Navajo Nation. Together, we acknowledge the history of genocide, dispossession, colonization, and ongoing systemic inequities while strengthening and respecting relationships with indigenous peoples. We give thanks to the past, present, and future stewards of this land, and we respect all tribal nations' sovereignty. In offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm indigenous resiliency, self-determination and self-governance of, of New Mexico's tribes and nations who are still here today. And for those of you who have not heard the news, the Supreme Court did in fact acknowledge the self-governance of New Mexico, of our nation's tribes uh, around the nation um, in acknowledging that the um, ICWA um, Indigenous Children's Welfare Act is still holding for the nation. So good news there. Also want to let you know that the um, New Mexico Alliance of Health Councils is in the process of making our land acknowledgement more than words. So we're working with a consultant and hopefully you heard about this at the last Health Council talk. We are working uh, to develop a toolkit, uh, which will be on our website very soon, that tracks our progress toward making our land acknowledgement actionable. And we will invite all of you to join us in that as soon as it's up and loaded. So thank you all again for coming. And today we are going to uh, take you through what's happening with the New Mexico Social Determinants of Health slash Connect Collaborative. Um, as I said, I'm on the planning team. We have some other members of the planning team here, Jessica Osenbruch, wave your hand, Jessica, from uh, Roadrunner Food Bank and, I, and Chris Hollis. Chris, say hello. Krista Hernandez from uh, Santa Fe Connect. You'll be hearing about them, more about them. Uh, anybody else here from the collaborative planning team? I think that's it for the moment. So what we'd like to do, I'm gonna share my screen again. And what we'd like to do is take you through our orientation presentation. Kind of gives you a sense of what the collaborative is and what we are doing now and what we are planning to do in the future. So planning team, please feel free to kick in as we go along. Then we'll have some time uh, for some questions and answers. But planning team, I think we can just say, pitch in when you have a question. Just let us know if you have a question. And Rebecca and planning team, if you would help me check the um, chat, because once I share my screen, I'm not going to be able to see the chat. So if you help me check that. Okay, thanks. So we're going to share our screen now. Share. So New Mexico Collabor Social Determinants of Health Collaborative. This is us. Whoops. Who are we? We are an emerging, 
one year old and emerging, trying to be as open and inclusive as we can. A collaboration of New Mexicans who are all working together toward a common goal. And that common goal is to ensure that all New Mexicans have equitable access to all the resources they need to thrive. So we welcome all of you. And if you're not already signed on to uh, this venture, please do. And we'll give you contact information as we go along. So that's who we are in a nutshell. Uh, why are we here? We have now crafted a purpose and vision that all people in New Mexico will be living in communities with equitable access to the conditions they need to thrive. Our mission, the collaborative mission, is to create a space for all of us to come together, all these many people to come together, to share information, to build relationships, uh, and to collaborate toward this shared goal. So that's our particular mission of the collaborative creating and holding this space for all of us to come together, share what we're doing, share what's going on, share ideas, information, and most importantly, align our efforts toward this common goal. We have a number of specific goals here about developing shared outcome measures and monitoring progress, uh, supporting the development and implementation of a closed loop referral system. You probably have been hearing about this lately and you'll hear more today. And more basically, to convene community members from across the state to align our efforts and identify emerging opportunities to collaborate, improve policies, create shared accountability toward achieving, again, this common purpose. So that is where we are at the moment. Uh, we have a set of values here. Equitable. Equity is big equitable involvement, access, and outcomes, cross-sector, broad cross-sector alignment, collaboration, and integration of efforts. We want to build on New Mexico's assets. That is not to say we have not been informed greatly by things that are happening across the nation, but we know exciting things are happening here in New Mexico, and we want to recognize those and build on them. We want to be community informed and community led, very, very important to all of us. And we are going to be bold, ambitious, and pragmatic. So those are our values. If you sign on, please join us. Okay, here's the big picture, literally. The idea is that this infrastructure that will address the social determinants of health and ensure that everyone has access to the resources they need has got to be based in the community. So here is the outer, outer uh, ring. Everything we're doing is community-based, informed by, governed by, decisions made by our many and diverse communities. So that involves creating, first and foremost, some very strong and effective networks of community partners, community-based organizations who are serving people who need help, uh, healthcare providers who are monitoring and providing resources for our health, um, business sector who have employees that need access to services, faith-based organizations who are often the first people, first place people go when they need services. So we need to build very strong and effective community partnerships. And we have a very good model of that in Santa Fe, the Santa Fe Connect Partnership. And Krista is here and will be able to answer questions and give us more information about how that's working in Santa Fe and how it might prove a model for the rest of our communities across uh, um, New Mexico in building these partnerships. What Santa Fe has discovered, what all of us really have discovered is people need help to connect with the resources that they are looking for. And that is very often a person in the shape of a navigator. So a community health worker, a peer support worker, a care coordinator. We're gonna to need to identify those folks that can provide that on the ground, personal connection, personal touch, 
and make that connection between people who need help and the resources that have that help that they need. So that's the context in which this social determinants of health collaborative is building this effort, the statewide community-based statewide collaborative effort. Now, within that context, there are three mechanisms that we think are needed to make this happen. And one is that we're gonna need access to health information about people, confidential health information about people. And that is currently being provided by Synchronous, which is our health information exchange. Secondly, and equally important, we need a resource information exchange. And this is where the Alliance of Health Council comes in because we do have the SHARE New Mexico Resource Directory and we are volunteering to contribute our research directory as the foundation to build on for a statewide resource information directory uh, database, resource information database that everybody can contribute to and that everyone can benefit from. So 211, 100% community, all those state agencies and bureaus all of whom seem to have their own individual resource directory. Let's join forces and work together to create a statewide comprehensive resource information exchange so that everybody in New Mexico has access to all the resources that we know about uh, so they can select the ones that are most appropriate for them. Then the health information and the resource information then provides uh, information that can be used by one or more referral systems. So we're just learning now how health providers and community-based organizations and churches and other people are referring people to the services they need. Hopefully all that information then will help us create a statewide resource and referral infrastructure that will accomplish our goal which again is to make sure that every New Mexican has access to the resources they need to thrive. I'm gonna pause there because that was a lot of information. So let me pause there and see um, if anybody on, if anyone on our planning team has anything to add to this or if any of you who are with us today have questions or comments. And Valerie, you have your hand up, I see. Hi, yeah. Um, so that was a lot of information. Thank you so much for allowing um, a space for questions. So um, as you know, Wendy, I'm working with a, a member of um, the Grant County Community Health Council to contribute in updating a database um, uh, for services in Grant County. I just want to get some clarification on, because, you know, it would be really uh, non-productive to duplicate efforts. So should we be updating the Share New Mexico database or what, or, or the database that you mentioned before, and how can we um, do that productively in a way that uh, makes sense for our community? I'm so glad you raised that question, Valerie, because of course, what we want to do here with the collaborative is to work together so we don't duplicate efforts, or at least we align efforts so we can share the information with each other. So that resource information exchange is in the process of uh, becoming what we call interoperable, which means it'll be able to import information from a number of different uh, platforms to collect resources. So we'll be able to pull that all in together so that everybody will have access to all the information that's being collected by the many people and platforms who are collecting this information. That said, Valerie, since you are a health council and working with the health council and Share, Direct, Share Research Directory is a program of the Alliance, we would love to work with you if you'd like to do that so that you can, if you choose, use the Share Resource Directory as your platform. 
Okay, so just confirming um, if we if if we develop a plan and work with you to begin teaching people and maybe ourselves as well, updating the Share New Mexico website, this wouldn't be a duplication of efforts because with the resource information exchange, you can just take the information from that website and input it into that exchange. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. Okay. Which is at, I don't want to say step one, but maybe step two, but that is, that is our goal. So any of you that have uh, access to are working with a resource directory, please get in touch with me and we can talk about how we can best align our efforts so that we aren't uh, duplicating effort, that we aren't um, wasting time, that everything we do will ultimately be part of this bigger picture. Anybody else? comments, questions. And of course, Valerie, you know, thank you very much that you are going to be part of our community conversations down in Southwest New Mexico this summer, exploring this very question. How are you currently linking people to services? And uh, how's that going? What's working? What needs to happen to make it better? Any of you that are located in the six counties of Grant, Hidalgo, Luna, Otero, Sierra, Doña Ana, you are invited to participate. Cynthia, I see your hand up. Hi, thank you. Um, this sounds amazing, honestly. Um, how does insurance or Medicaid fit into this? Because we work a lot with HSD and we work even more with the marketplace. How would they fit into all of this? Mm -hmm. Well, we have HSD as a key as key players in this collaborative. So we are working with them as they develop their proposal for a closed loop referral system for Medicaid. So we're in, in regular communication with them. In fact, uh, we'll talk a little bit later about our structure. We have uh, five working committees, uh, five working groups, and the leads of those working groups are working with HSD as part of their committee to develop the closed loop referrals. So we're very much uh, supportive of and hope to help bring community voice to HSD as they develop their Medicaid closed loop referral system. Now, that's Medicaid, which is unfortunately half of our population, but there are some other people out there, as you say, in the marketplace. Uh, Presbyterian Health Plan is very involved in this collaborative, so they are looking for ways that they can uh, coordinate their efforts there for the people that are in their plan. Um, we'd love to have the other health insurance people involved. I believe Be Well New Mexico has, uh, I'm not sure about Be Well New Mexico, um, Western Sky has uh, been attending our meetings. So um, yes, health plans are critical and that's why we are so glad to see you, Cynthia. Cynthia, by the way, is with the, what's OSI, Cynthia? Um, I'm with the Office of Superintendent of Insurance, who regulates all the, the private insurance here in New Mexico. I specifically work with healthcare affordability and expansion. So we work with the marketplace to be able to provide a number of subsidies and making uh, health insurance a bit more affordable to people within New Mexico. And we're also working with HSD during this whole unwinding period and trying to navigate people through, uh, navigate people who have lost their eligibility through Medicaid, navigate them into uh, the marketplace, be well and M, so they can choose something that while may not be free, in some cases it still can be, um, is still affordable and doesn't uh, create a gap in healthcare coverage. Excellent, thank you, Cynthia. So yes, we welcome you on board our insurance plans are just going to be critical to the success of this of this venture. And Linda. Hi, Wendy. How are you? Fine. How are you? United. Hi, well, United. Yes. Hi, as, I was hi, saying, United. as I was saying, healthcare plans are essential. Yes. I, this sounds really amazing and wonderful. And so we United have a, we have commercial population and we have Medicare population right now. And of course, our bidding for the Medicaid contract when that comes out, but we very much would like to be involved. So how 
how do you want us to be involved? Just attending this meeting? I mean, mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're trying to be at all the public meetings, but what's your vision of us being involved? Good segue, Linda. If I may, let me continue with our structure because that answers Linda's question in part. Um, so here's what we're going to do going forward. We're going to keep, we're going to develop and align goals with all of our partners, contribute to keep up and support what's going uh, under what's underway in New Mexico, identify new programs. And boy, there've been a bunch of new programs that have just popped up recently that we want to learn more about. And then centrally to align current and future efforts as we work together toward our vision. So we, here's how the work gets done. So yes, Linda, join our membership, which just, I, we're gonna be sending you information about how you can get on our email list. That's our membership. It's about oh, somewhere between 175 and 200 people right now. But here's where the work gets done. We have five action groups. So the action plan group, which is headed up by Sharon Finarelli and Roberto Martinez, from DOH, Sharon from Presbyterian Health Plan, Roberto Martinez from DOH. They are uh, trying to get all of us to create an action plan with a timeline so we can keep track of what we're doing and make sure that our five work groups are aligning efforts. So that's what they're doing. The charter group, uh, Lee Caswell from Presbyterian Health Services and Terry Stewart from Synchronous are developing, have just finished drafting that vision mission goals piece that you saw earlier and now they're working on structure what is membership what does membership entail they're thinking it should entail some responsibilities like showing up and perhaps joining one of our work groups um, so these are our five work groups chart uh, action plan charter community outreach and engagement and jessica osenbruj and um chris hollis who are here today are co-chairing that group. And uh, Chris, uh, Jessica, do you wanna explain what your group is doing? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, the community engagement work group uh, started out to think a little bit about who should we be outreaching to and engaging uh, to attend the monthly meetings of the, of the collaborative. Um, so thank you to Chris uh, for uh, co-chairing uh, this work group with me. As time has gone on, we've received some additional feedback from the committee members. It is quite a, a large committee. And some of that work is, is centered in um, what is a member of the collaboratives or member benefits? What does that mean to uh, uh, organizations or individuals that are part of the collaborative. Uh, additionally, and, and probably a real critical part of that work is um, really having a good framework in engaging the community to understand how our health-related social needs or social determinants of health, drivers of health, really being addressed in a localized uh, setting or community. As Wendy has mentioned, the collaborative itself came together as a result of uh, uh, Connect in Santa Fe, as well as the Accountable Health Communities Project in, in Albuquerque. These two groups were always talking to each other and knew that there were many other uh, efforts in many communities in every corner of New Mexico that may have a focus on healthcare organizations and community-based organizations and communities working together to address health-related social needs. Hence, the collaborative getting everybody together to understand what, what is happening. Um, and, and also, how do we approach understanding what's happening within that context and the capacity and the ability for localized communities to be a part of the statewide closed loop referral system uh, that's uh, an element of the turquoise care starting in, in January. And where is their capacity or where is their support needed and, and so forth. So that's some of the work of the Community Engagement Council. Chris, uh, any other things that I'm missing? Um, I don't think so. Um, you've 
covered it quite well and very briefly on that. Um, in a way, um, in a sense, uh, with community engagement, I mean, this work group is definitely trying to reach out to or have members in it who you would consider, you know, members of the community, the more sort of grassroots and grass tips approach on this also, because of, you know, again, for the whole collaborative, the idea of being sort of community driven in a lot of this. So we are definitely trying to, in any of the work group meetings that we're having, Jessica's very good at sort of facilitating the discussions, you know, around how the community sees this and what they would like. Mm -hmm. Right. And this work group is also uh, sponsoring our first round of community conversations down in Southwest New Mexico. That's going to uh, lead into some other community conversations that are happening or align with other, share information with other community conversations that are happening that we're hearing about around the state. So again, if you're involved in um, these kinds of activities, finding out more in your community, how your community is connecting people to resources they need. We'd love to hear from you. And perhaps you want to join this work group. The Data Standards and Technology Work Group is kind of the nitty gritty. Uh, we do need technology to make this work. It's not perhaps the first thing we want to think about because the first thing we want to think about are these community networks and partnerships. But uh, there are a number of uh, technology issues and data issues that need to be resolved. And that is uh, spearheaded by Synchronous because they currently head up the Health Information Exchange that has been doing a lot of work around technology and standards, data standards for Health Information Exchange. And then finance sustainability is really being led by the uh, Santa Fe Connect Group because they're the furthest along and they're actually at the point where they're thinking very seriously and have some recommendations around how do we keep this going. Um, Krista, did you want to say anything about either this work group or Santa Fe Connect and where you're at? So um, our work group, we are seeking members. We have not had a ton of folks um, who have joined us in our work group discussion, but really we feel um, having our funders at the table and identifying how the funding can and should be utilized that's really gonna direct the type of work to be completed. Here in Santa Fe, we are hoping and anticipating to be able to establish a hub, so an administrative hub, um, so that we can begin billing for Medicaid, Medicare. At some point in time uh, with our Unitas partners, we do have a payments feature and in other states, they are able to bill Medicaid via this online closed loop referral system. And so that's kind of where we are here in Santa Fe. We're trying to identify what our next steps are to move forward. We would definitely feel that having funding and identifying sustainability around this. Uh, for brief context, um, Connect was established in 2017. We had a pool of $3.1 million of indigent care funds that Santa Fe County actually had access to and were told to use. And so that's really, utilizing that $3.1 million of indigent care funds were used to establish Connect. And so most counties in New Mexico do have indigent care dollars. And so it may seem like it's very challenging and difficult to establish something like what we have here in Santa Fe. And it's not to say it's not challenging, but understanding that there may, you may have access to funding that's accessible to you already to establish a navigation network to make its own referrals. It could be quite possible and feasible for just about anyone in the state. So that's kind of where we're at in history for us. Great. So, what we want to do, and oh, let me just say about funding and sustainability, the other uh, message that this group has been sending to people with the money is, again, that the people who are central, who are essential to this process, the community-based organizations, the healthcare providers, the community health workers, the care navigators, they're going to need support. To, there, there must be funding to support that on-the-ground people part of the infrastructure, not just technology. So it's all of a piece. And again, Santa Fe Connect has been really helpful there because 
Krista, I know that you spent the first, what, year or two building your network, your community network, and that you're telling us very clearly that that really is essential foundational work. Right. And that's the the key component. The things we always kind of highlight are there are two pieces. Or, well, when do you highlight? There are three pieces to the puzzle. The third piece, the data piece, that's something we're still exploring for Connect Here in Santa Fe with synchronous. The other two pieces, though, the navigation network, you need a network, you need to build the foundation, you need to identify who's going to be making and sending referrals. They need to be equipped, they need to be trained, they need to have standards, protocols, um, and expectations that are established so that that trust can be established. And you know, if I'm sending a referral to this agency, they're going to respond and they're going to take care of the person that I'm sending to them. The other piece is the tool. That's the platform, the closed loop referral system, whatever it is, that's the tool. And those are two different pieces, I think, to keep in mind. One is the people as the resource. The other is the platform as the resource. And those are two different things. The platform, the tool can help you do your job. But without that foundation being established of navigators who are trained to know what to do, you can't use the tool to do your work. So that's where we always like to highlight that difference. Thank you, Krista. Well said. So Linda, certainly join our email list and get stay in the loop, find out what's going on, attend these meetings, which are the last Friday of every month at one o'clock. Uh, but also please join a work group because that is where the work is getting done. And every other month we have a work group meeting. So every other month, um, this month in our next meeting is June 26th and it will be a meeting of the whole. So come on board, find out what's going on. But the next meeting, which would be July, will be meeting in work groups. So you want to decide which work group you want to be a part of and sign up for it. And this uh, slideshow with all of it, its links will be available to you uh, in, very soon after this meeting. So stay tuned. And I do just want to note real quick, Wendy, I did drop that link um, oh, in the chat. Thank so you. if anybody wants to click that, I posted that. And then there's also a question in the chat. Okay. Okay. What is the question in the chat? So Melissa says, sorry if I missed this, but can you explain how this collaborative relates to NM State, the New Mexico State Health Equity Committee? I don't know. Does anybody else know on this call? Um, Wendy, I don't, I don't think there's a specific relationship, uh, but um, generally the New Mexico State Health Equity Committee, it has been focused on talking a lot more about the state health improvement planning process. Mm -hmm. And I do know that Roberto has quite often tried to sort of link in a way or connect the work of both, you know, this committee and the SHIP process, as well as the New Mexico social determinants of health collaborative. So I think as, as time progresses and we keep all moving forward, uh, there will be sort of a relationship on that, even if it's just sharing information about what's going on. And I don't, I believe that the state um, health equity committee really is not meeting through the rest of the summer and will probably pick up. So there may be sort of reports um, at that time back from the collaborative. I'm not sure. I mean, it's more information sharing than anything else. If anybody has a link to the New Mexico Health Equity Committee, Equity Committee, did I get that right? Uh, please help us make that connection because yes, we would welcome them into this collaborative. We need them in this collaborative. Uh, this is perhaps the time to say also some of our other partners. Uh, we work very closely with the New Mexico Primary Care Council and their related association, which is comprised of the um, federally qualified health centers and, and clinics in the state. So we are trying to reach out to all those organizations, networks that are working again toward this similar goal of making sure that people have access to the care they need. Uh, the school-based health, the Alliance for School-Based Healthcare um, is very interested now in coming on board. Hopefully they're looking for staff, they're, hiring staff. So they're looking for the capacity to be able to join in with us and work with us. We're working with the Behavioral Health Collaborative, both at the state and local levels. So again, if any of you have connections to statewide networks, 
that are working toward a similar goal, please make sure that we know about them and that they know about us. Well, and then Wendy, Linda just asked in the chat. Oh, never mind. Um, maybe not. Linda asked, um, but it looks like Krista answered it. So never mind. Okay. Um, okay. Oh, the Santa Fe Connect. Okay. I was going to say, if anybody's interested in the state um, Health Equity Committee, that would be through Leah Sanchez at New Mexico Public Health. Okay, great. Chris, make sure we have that somewhere and we make we have that connection. Um, so I'm assuming that someone asked Krista for her contact information, which is a very good idea. Is that what we did, Krista? Would yes, it's been entered for both Jennifer and myself. If you are a nonprofit or a for-profit or whoever you might be, you want to join Connect, um, please reach out to Jennifer and myself. Uh, Connect is a joint partnership between the city and county here in Santa Fe, uh, and Jennifer and I will be able to coordinate next steps with you. And that in itself is a wonderful example of collaboration, city and county working together. Folks, take that back to your communities. Okay, it can be done. Thank you. Okay, so here we are. Here's how you can join us. Sign up on our membership list. And that basically, uh, I think, goes to me at the moment. So, Rebecca, could you put my email in the chat? Uh, sign up for work groups. And again, we're going to be sending you this, or I think, uh, Rebecca, you've already put this into the chat also, how you can get this information. We do have an ever growing public information folder where we are putting tons of information as we find it. What's happening nationally, but more importantly, what's happening in New Mexico? So we also have our meeting notes and links to our meeting recordings in case you miss them. So there's a lot of information in that public information folder. Check it out and if you have any questions, let us know and we'll help you navigate it. So uh, attend, invite others to join our meeting, fourth Fridays at one. As I said, our next one is a week from today at one o'clock. It will be a meeting of the entire uh, membership. And Anne, Anna. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. Happy Friday. Uh, um, this sounds, uh, this sounds exciting and it's always something to celebrate when there's, you know, good folks and good energy coming together behind a, a good vision. I'm curious, Wendy or somebody else on your team, if you guys can talk a little bit more about sort of the model or the theory of change, if I, cause what I'm hearing is that maybe this is kind of a, um, kind of a health worker navigator referral system. Is that so if you could just explain a little bit more sort of the theory of change that you guys are working with, if you've built that out, if you haven't, that's totally fine. Um, that would be, I have a million questions, but that's kind of the first one is to just get a better understanding of how you guys see sort of getting from, from A to um, health equity. Anna, we do have the uh, action work group. Action work group has developed a, has in their presentation, in their information, a theory of change. It's not imprinted in my mind, but I can refer you to that. So that is our working theory of change at the moment. Okay, and awesome. Is it um, is it kind of a nav? Is it sort of the um, navigator? No, navigation is one piece of it, but it's much bigger than that. Okay, so it's beyond navigation and referral system. Navigation is critical. Um, and, and it is broadly speaking about creating a resource and referral infrastructure for New Mexico. So it's a very big vision. Uh, and it's very likely that we will have multiple theories of change for different aspects of our vision. And if you'd like to join the action work group Anna, I think they'd be happy to have you. That'd be great. For the warm invitation, Wendy. Um, I yeah, I'm just I'm curious. You know, I think it's really important the social determinants of health and getting making sure that people have access. Um, so I'm just curious how you all are thinking about it. 
and kind of what the what the theory is behind how we get there, you know, and where where does it plug in? Um, and the other thing that I guess I'll just bring up because it's it's at the front of mind for me, and sometimes that means that it's at the front of mind for other people too. But um, you know, I can speak personally. I I have a job. I'm a professional. I'm educated. I don't have health care. My neighbors around me are getting priced out because my because rents keep going up. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, I don't know if I need a navigator or a referral, right? I need more resources to be available. Yes, Anna, thank you so much. And that's really, thank you for helping me articulate the bigger vision. Because what we're seeing in New Mexico is we have a number of challenges to, to achieving our vision. Uh, one is that we don't have enough in the way of resources or our New Mexicans do not have enough in the way of resources to access the care they need. So that is definitely on the radar here. That is a big part of it. And that's why we're so happy to have the insurance companies here, to have Medicaid here, to have DOH here, aging and long-term services, people that are perhaps in a position to expand our resources. Um, I believe the primary care council is working on uh, expanding um, the availability of healthcare professionals. Is that right, Jessica? Isn't that on there? A number of groups are working on, we don't have enough healthcare professionals. Well, we, we don't have enough housing. We don't have enough of a lot of the resources we need. So that's one big issue that is on our radar screen and part of the, of the mission is to align efforts to address the fact that we do not have enough. The second piece where navigators come in is that people aren't aware of the resources that are available. So that's another piece of the puzzle. So there are multiple pieces to this very big picture. And that's why this collaborative has taken on a lot, but we feel we can contribute something toward achieving that very big picture. Does that help, Anna? I appreciate that, thanks. Okay, and Jessica. Yeah, just to, just to mention real quick, um, you are correct, Wendy, the New Mexico Primary Care uh, Council, um, which I also serve on, it does have a work group that's dedicated to um, really thinking about strategies to uh, create capacity within the healthcare provider uh, workforce across the state um particularly in rural and, and frontier communities but this is a this is an issue nationwide right um so that work group does does exist as well as a work group within the primary care council that focuses on health equity so anna the new mexico primary care council um as well as the social determinants of health collaborative are working hand in hand um <clears throat> on a, a the efforts and different pieces, but it's, it, it is very much in alignment between uh, the two groups as well as with the closed loop referral system. The last thing I wanted to mention, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to hop off to uh, get to a conference, but the, the last thing I, I wanted to mention is that the Social Determinants of Health Collaborative, um, as it's celebrating its birthday this month, so Wendy's mentioned that um, in some other meetings we've been in, so it's, we're one year old, uh, you know, this month, and um, there's still a lot of foundational pieces that we are creating. We've now achieved consensus on the mission and the vision and the goals, um, and other kinds of aspects with the with the work group. Um, but that that's why we strongly encourage and welcome anybody who would like to join a work group because there's still foundational aspects that we're trying to to move forward. And in some of these discussions, we we've talked about. Um, and, and Wendy, I hope I'm not misstating it, but I know that we've talked a little bit about where's the advocacy part of the, the work, right? Because this collaborative is not just solely about navigation and referral platform or some technology platform. As Wendy has mentioned, it's a much broader effort on a statewide level to have meaningful action and response to social determinants of health 
And it isn't, it's not only at an individual level or a patient level or a community member level, it's also on a broader system and policy level. So I, I think we've talked a little bit about um, having an advocacy work group, a systems work group um, at some point. I just don't think we've gotten there just yet. Um, but I hear what you're saying, Anna. Um, there's, and thank you for so much for sharing your, your unique circumstance. That's where that policy systems kinds of work really needs to have a role or, or a, be a part of, of this effort. And with that, Wendy, I'll hand it back to you. And I'm sorry, I have to go attend another <laughs> a conference. So thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> so if you want to join Jessica and Chris's uh, work group, they are doing a lot of work. In fact, I think they're thinking of maybe becoming two work groups because they have a lot to do. Um, so let's see, anything else, any other comments, suggestions? Again, I, I want to say again, the space that the collaborative is filling is we see in between the community and the state level. And we have membership in the community from community folks and at the state level, but we could clearly use more involvement from the community level. That's where we're happy to have health councils sign on. We know you've been super busy health councils creating your community health assessments and plans that are feeding up to the state health improvement plan. Uh, but hopefully you have a little bit more bandwidth now. You can uh, jump on here and let us know what's going on in your communities and, and join in this effort. I believe that Roberto Martinez, correct me if I'm wrong, Chris, I think Roberto said, um, the state health improvement plan has three priorities and one of them is access to care. And another one is specifically talking about making sure that people have access to social care, which means that uh, it's not just health care, it's all those other social drivers, determinants of health that people need access to. And I think the third one is behavioral health, which is not surprising given what's happening in New Mexico and elsewhere. So I think this collaborative and Roberto's participation in it and HSD's participation in it has really helped inform policy or priorities at least, priorities that can inform policies around where the state is going to invest its funding in terms of improving the health of New Mexicans. But we're always looking for more community input, more community voice. That's why Chris and uh, Jessica's uh, work group is so important and so large. But we also do need help if you're inclined and you have the expertise to work in the mindset, Anna, <laughs> to work on action plan and crafting uh, how we're gonna get there, uh, the structure, the charter group, it sounds esoteric, but it's really not like, how are we gonna operate as a collaborative? It's not easy to form and sustain a collaborative and keep it open and inclusive and moving forward. And we're depending on the charter group to help us figure out what kind of structure and processes we need to be inclusive and to keep moving and to keep people aligned. If you're inclined to data, if you're in the data mode, we need some help there. If you're interested in finance and sustainability, we need some help there. Have I left out a work group? It seems that I have, maybe I've hit them all. So join the membership, join us at our next meeting, Friday at one to hear what's going on and then join a work group. Now, a little preview, oh, Jessica's left but a little preview on what we're gonna do at the meeting on Friday. We're gonna get updates from what's going on. So hopefully we're gonna hear what's going on from, HS, with, from HSD about the closed loop referral system. Where are they in that process to create a closed loop referral system for Medicaid people? We've heard about an exciting new venture that UNM, Office for Community Health is putting forward. I think they're pitching this to aging and long-term services and some other state agencies. 
The idea here is to address another really critical social determinants of health in our rural communities, and that is transportation. So they're pitching a proposal to create four pilot projects in four rural New Mexican communities that will create a hub and spoke transportation function. I think they're thinking about sending out vans to transport people to various um, places where they can access resources. So we're gonna hear more about that brand new. Um, we, we wanna hear more, Krista, you're still on board. We'd like to hear more about this um, community care hub because we know that Santa Fe is thinking about that. And we've heard now also that uh, the North Central New Mexican Development District which is their COG, COG, what does COG stand for? Council of Governments up in Northern New Mexico. We hear that they're also thinking of applying to be a community care hub through another source of federal funding, which is the Administration for Community Living, which administers all the money for aging services and for disability services. And since the uh, NCNMDD, also serves as the non-metro area of aging, area on aging services. We're hoping to hear from them about their plans. If you know of anything else that's happening in the state that you think we, and we, if, if anything is happening in the rest of the state that pertains to this goal, we do want to hear about it. So if you uh, would like to give us some information about what you know is going on, please bring it to us. And if we have time in the Friday meeting, we'll talk about it. And if we don't, We'll certainly keep track of it and track it. Krista, did I put you on the spot there? Um, well, did you want an update now or for our SDOH class? No, no, for, for the Friday meeting. Okay. That's what we're going to do for the Friday okay. meeting. Come to the Friday meeting and find out what's going on and then join a work group for the July meeting. So I see we have like six minutes left. Does anybody else have any questions or comments or suggestions. And Rebecca, I think you're still here. Rebecca, we're going to get this onto our website and out to folks pretty soon, right? Yep. In the next few days. In the next few days. Okay. Oh, and the next beginning of next week. The beginning of next week, right? Because this is Friday and we don't want Rebecca working over the weekend. Right, Rebecca. So check our website, check in with us uh, Monday, Tuesday, and we'll make sure that you have all these connections to this collaborative. Any other questions, comments? And I see that Sarah's got this nice little functionality where you can add uh, any last minute items to her website. Anybody else, planning team, anything else? Cynthia, thanks for coming. You see how important it is. We need we need insurance, Cynthia. Absolutely agree. Especially as those as we do this transition from Medicaid. Thank you so much, Cynthia, for working on that. How many thousands and thousands of people are going to be caught in this transition off Medicaid onto what? Yeah. Well, we're. I mean, initial estimates were at. 400 to 500,000 and we're seeing states like uh, Arkansas and I think it was West Virginia already are seeing an inordinate number of uh, removals from Medicaid which seemed uh, which seem even a bit extreme so they're afraid that those two states are not really doing a whole lot to properly process the the re-enrollments so uh, our HSD program is doing so much to try to limit the number of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. you're never going to be error free. So they're doing everything they can to limit the number of errors and making sure that uh, they reach out to people who could still qualify and making sure that they do get their information in, that they do go through the recertification process and make sure they get the final um, final decision before they try to figure out uh, how they can transition to private insurance. So um, HST is doing a lot and it's it's amazing how well they're doing doing this. We, we had a presentation, I don't know if you were there, uh, those of you here, uh, 
uh, Chris Gomez from Western Sky and someone from Be Well New Mexico gave a presentation on links for you all to help your community members connect with the resources that are available. Cynthia, I may get with you again. Rebecca, maybe we can put something like this on our website or put it out in an emergency. The transition is happening. Here are resources because you all at community health councils and the others of you in community, we know that you're on the front lines and you're the people, you're the ones that people are going to go to when they run into trouble. And Anna, you we need to find insurance for you. Health councils, thank you, because we are going to get back with you to see specifically how you want to um, help with this endeavor. But anybody else on this call and people you know that you think would be interested and whose voices need to be heard, please do connect with us and come into this space that we're holding for you. So thank you all. Two minutes left. Does anybody have the last word? I know it's a lot of information. You'll be getting more uh, if you access our website, but let's stay in touch. Thank you all. Thank you, Wendy.